Hello everyone, uh, I'm Moonshine of 8-Bit Fiction and as many of you know, I am one of the three people who run this page. Um, I'm Moonshine and then we have Sunshine, the person who makes all the art, and Star Baby, the person you've actually been interacting with, especially on Twitter lately. And wow, alright, so we've been online for about 10 years now and on Twitter particularly for about six years now and we have never shown our faces before but here I am now why <laughs> well why am I doing this now we've been talking a lot about what's been happening lately and um, Truth is, you know, 8-Bit Fiction has always been a place where people can, people are encouraged to access their emotions and express what they need in whatever way they want in the cheesiest possible way. Uh, and we do want to keep it that way. But thing is, lately, with what's been happening, um, we've been thinking that, hey, we need to we need to talk about this. Okay? There are, I don't know about you, but there are a lot of emotions coming up at this time about what's happening to the world, about what's happening to us, about, you know, all these things we're worried about, all these things that we can't answer. And yeah, I'm sure that's not just for me or my circles. I think this is something that's safe to say everybody is experiencing right now. So that's why I'm here, because actually in the real world, okay, moonshine is my secret identity, but in the real world, I am actually a psychologist and I'm also a teacher. So I've been talking to my clients uh, over the past three weeks and I've been observing my friends and my students. And one thing is clear to me, and that's we're anxious. We're, we're all feeling anxiety about what's happening. And we're exhibiting this in different ways. So one thing that I like to keep telling people, especially when they tell me about how they're feeling, is that it's normal. It's normal for us to be feeling this way. Because what is anxiety anyway? Uh, anxiety is just the expression of fear of something that we don't understand okay or when we think that something is threatening our safety so when it something's vague or when something's threatening this is a normal response and it goes without saying that there is a threat there's a real threat that's out there right now and it's something that we can't really understand and we can't fully predict okay um, the virus is something that we really don't fully understand yet and we can't fully predict. That's why we're doing this, you know, we're, we're um, self-isolating, we're minimizing our interaction with other people, we're staying at home. Um, and this, just this situation also has started to affect our lives in, in ways that maybe we've never experienced before. The, um, schools have stopped, work has stopped. Uh, much of the structures that we're familiar with in our lives has been on halt. And that creates this whole situation where we can't say what's going to happen next. Lots of question marks. Um, you know, what's going to happen next week? What's going to happen next month for the students? Like, what's going to happen to the school year? Am I going to graduate? You know, for, and for the others, like, how am I going to earn money? When am I going to get my next paycheck? How am I going to pay my bills? There are so many unknowns, and this just makes the situation really, really ripe for this emotion, for this state of anxiety. And so maybe the first thing I want to say for all of you who are feeling this too is that, one, it's normal. What you are feeling is normal. But maybe to go beyond that a little bit, I've also been telling people that... Um, it's normal, and truth is, it's actually something that has a purpose. I know it may be very unpleasant, and, and we don't want to feel this way, but maybe it also helps to bear it by understanding that there's a purpose to what we're feeling. Okay? It's maybe something that even helps us and can help us. 
it's because we feel this this worry okay this anxiety that we're able to feel the need to protect ourselves that's why we're so careful that's why we stay home that's why we wash our hands if we didn't feel this worry then we'd be very reckless and careless and probably be harming other people and harming ourselves in the situation so in that case it works for you if you feel that particular level of anxiety that's all right it's probably helping you and it's because of this anxiety that we worry about um, people we care about and it's normal to worry about people you care about it's normal to feel sad that things aren't go well going well for uh, the people who we care about and of course we're worried and sad of course we have feelings because we care so in that way it's normal that you're feeling this and then finally, and here is something that I've been seeing online a lot uh, and hearing from my friends a lot. Because one other uh, emotion that comes up with anxiety is anger. Anger comes up when uh, we see things that, aren't, that, that are harmful, that we want to defend ourselves from. And there have been a lot of those things happening lately. Um, and this is, again, like the coronavirus is something that's not just happening where I am. It's something that's happening in different places in the world. Okay. We have not been, we have been seeing lots of uh, injustices, lots of cracks in the system, lots of things that we wish we could change. And uh an emotion that comes up with this is a very common one, is anger. And what I'm saying is that, of course, we're angry, okay? Because things are not okay. And we want to make it right. We know it's not right, and we want to make it right. We want to make it right for ourselves, and we want to make it right for other people. So it's an appropriate emotion. It's an adaptive emotion. It's something that's that we need um and it's something that makes sense right now okay it's it's okay to be anxious it's okay to worry it's okay to be sad it's okay to be angry however we gotta be careful and that's a large part of what i wanted to say right now we have to be careful and we have to take care of ourselves of ourselves in all of this because if we feel these things, worry, sadness, and anger too intensely for too long without breaks, we might end up in a place where we are harming ourselves. And um, we could also end up in a place where we just go numb, where we just don't care anymore. Okay. That's the danger of staying too long in a very high intense state of emotion that's called burnout right so we can burn out from our own emotions that's why it's really important to be able to step away to take a step back to take breaks from our strong emotions and i'm not saying uh to forget them really literally just to take breaks so that you can go back and feel them later right? um so because this is not a sprint I don't think this is a sprint. I mean, we don't even know when this is really going to end. So how are we going to sustain these feelings that are appropriate and needed in the situation, needed for us to act or, or to, well, to stay sane, okay? to, to stay human, to care? Uh, how are we going to sustain it if we don't take care of ourselves? So that's what I'm saying. I guess that's what I want to encourage people to do. Please remember to shift from your expending your energies in this way. Please remember that you can, there's nothing wrong with stepping away from your computer. There's nothing wrong with going into something fantastic for a moment, like watching movies or reading books. It doesn't mean you're trying to deny what's happening. It can actually be something that's quite healthy and quite good for you so that you can still maintain 
that righteous anger that you have, that righteous worrying and, and that real human sadness that you might be feeling in all of this. It's important that we do this or else it might just be too much for us to bear. And there's another reason why we need to keep feeling our feelings. Because honestly, it seems to me that's what that what's happening right now is the world's getting shaken up. It's just weird what's happening. We've never seen it before. I have never seen anything like this before. And everybody else out there is saying that they've never seen anything like this before. And I think that precisely is what makes us anxious. That the world's getting shaken up and there's so many unknowns. But uh, what I wanted to end with was, was to say that, look, the, these unknowns that are starting to open up are, are blank spaces. It's, we're seeing the spaces that the status quo can't fill. And people are caring so much more. So how we react now is important. What we say now is important. Because what we say and how we act is going to have an effect on how those black spaces, which are making us anxious, get filled. And once those spaces get filled, well we change how the world works. So I think how we keep ourselves together now is really important. What we say and how we say it, what we worry about, what we're angry about, and what we're sad about is important. Because this is what makes us human. These are the emotions that will make us act. And hopefully, the actions that we, we take, whether it's, you know, you, of course, I'm talking about what we can do now, you know, the things we do online, the things we say online. Um, hopefully, these actions are things that can make changes in these spaces that are opening up. So this anxiety, again, these things that make us anxious, there's also another side to it. These are also things that can make us creative, that can make us change things in the world, and we have an opportunity to do that now. I want to acknowledge another feeling, and I wonder if it's a feeling that many of us are also feeling right now, because I don't know about you, but I am isolated. I'm alone where I am, and I've chosen that because maybe you're feeling small in all of this. Uh, maybe you're asking yourself, am I doing enough? Um, am I useless in all of this? What does my action uh, do? in this situation how can it make a difference and to be frank the truth is if you just think of your actions as an individual then then of course you're going to feel small because you are small the threat is so big and so pervasive it's worldwide and it's so multi-aspected it's probably the biggest boss we've ever needed to face ever it's a huge monster and you are just a tiny little cell. So it's an impossible task to ask yourself and your individual action to make a difference just by yourself. So it's really important to remember right now that you are not the only cell in existence. You are a cell in a hand that's made up of other cells, that's connected to a body that I'm really hoping is the body of a hero that holds the sword that will eventually slay that monster. So your contributions as a cell, if you just think of yourself as a cell, may not look like much, but if it's you and everybody else saying the same thing, acting and asking for the same things, going for the same action, then maybe, maybe then we'll see that it's not impossible that we do have a role in this if we look at it as a bigger whole. Uh, your role, no matter how tiny then, if you see yourself as a cell, as a part of that bigger body, then you'll see that you can make a contribution. You can make a difference, whether it's by staying at home or by being that person who comforts your friends, or by calling out the problems and injustices that you see, calling it out online, or by cooking for your family, or taking regular showers, whatever it is. 
That is your small contribution to this impossible task of slaying this monster. Because if you do it and everybody else do it, then, then it's not impossible. So, so there. Um, that's what I wanted to say today. Uh, I hope that you found something helpful here. Um, and yeah, this is something that really we really want to start doing because uh, we want to keep, you know, we want to make sure that this stays a place where we can keep expressing and we can keep talking about these things we're feeling and hopefully processing them so that they make sense for us, especially in these times. Um, so I'll just be here. Uh, you can write to me through letters at 8bitfiction.com. Or you can just tweet Star Baby here on, on Twitter. And uh, I'll be back here again next week. Hopefully, um, I get to hear from you so that maybe that's the next thing we'll talk about. But that's it for today. And thank you for being here. I'll see you guys next week. <laughs>